Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and uh, if you're new here, welcome. I talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today I'm actually joined by my really good friend, Steph, one of my oldest friends on YouTube, Movie Chatter. How are you doing? I'm good, Nathan. How are you? I'm great. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about some really cool things today. Um, we're actually talking, um, today we're going to be doing a split and a joint venture that we're both going to be doing. We're going to be talking about two films from a particular set. What set is that? It is... The William Castle set from Indicator. It is uh, volume one, right? Yeah, volume one. Volume one. 94 through 97. Yes. And yeah, today we're talking about uh, two of them, the first two in the set. Yep. We're talking about The Tingler yep. with Vincent Price and 13 Ghosts. And 13 Ghosts. I, I'm is- excited about this. But yeah, which is kind of cool considering Scream Factory recently put out a remake of 13 Ghosts. Oh yeah, I, I remember that. Scream yeah. Factory is doing great work. I, 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 have, partake, I have partaken in the sale that has not shipped yet. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the story <laughs> of our lives, right? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, today we're talking about um, the amazing William Castle who um, is known for his gimmicks, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is this is something that like... I wasn't around, obviously, 1959 or 1960 when a lot of these uh, gimmicks happened, but I, I know for a fact that a lot of these cannot be done today. <laughs> for obvious reasons. And, you know, I'm proud to say that as old as I am, I wasn't around for these either. I'm, well, I'm glad that we feel, both discovered them. <laughs> I feel way. good about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, do you have any thoughts about, like, kind of tackling this set Because I and before we even, like, jump into these particular films? For for others who are maybe new to it, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about how how I uh, you know I I would say uh, for anyone who's interested in classic horror, maybe like in the vein of Hitchcock, Mm -hmm. where kind of less is more, they show you less is more. uh, I think anyone who's interested in that type of horror would really uh, appreciate this set, and I think that he is a wonderful storyteller. And definitely what I found is it really engages me and it keeps my interest and pretty much you're guessing right up to the end with a lot of these. Yeah. And uh, is like cheap as a lot of these things are made, right? Mm-hmm. Cause like there's like a budget to it and it, it honestly feels like there's, there's some Hitchcock elements to it. Like, mm-hmm. especially with, when we talk about homicidal on your channel, mm-hmm. um, like there's, there's those elements, but there's also like this theatrical kind of element to it to where Mm -hmm. like he really wants to involve the audience in some kind of way and I I really like that and I I, you don't find very many directors that really interact that way right and I I watch a lot of the special features on these things uh on these in these discs and they it really covers how much of like a kind of it almost feels like he was a tycoon but a tycoon Mm -hmm. that was like really lovable you know Mm -hmm not somebody who was like trying to cheapen a deal or anything. He just was really kind of into these really cheap thrills, you know? Yeah. And like the, the full spectrum of an experience, Mm -hmm. not just sitting there watching a flat screen. Right. And like, yeah, you're like, you're not just going to any type of film. It's like, it's an event. You have to go to this event. It's the William Castle presents, you know, the tingler. And so this this is one of his early films and it came out in 1959 right here. Mm -hmm. The one we'll, the first one we'll talk about uh, with with the tingler. And this one has um, a wonderful, wonderful thing uh, called Percepto um, (laughs) that that he did um, when this came out. And this is definitely one that you cannot do today in in any, that you're going to get a lawsuit. Um, I believe (laughs) um, that with this one in particular, there was, um, maybe a nurse on standby or, or, or something along those lines. I, I don't get me, no quote me. Anyone who's going right. to probably just be like, like you're wrong, Nathan. Like it was this movie. Yeah. Like, don't quote us. Yeah. Don't quote us. Uh, <laughs> but with the tingler, he rigged the theater seats uh, of a lot of the premieres that he would put this in uh, with some kind of electrical shock machine at random spots. <laughs> and during a particular scene in this film, when Vincent mm-hmm. Price is in a movie theater trying to find this creature, um that we'll describe in a little bit um it shocks it like the audience like the uh, screen goes black so you're obviously you're in this black um this theater and then random people next to you or yourself maybe might get shocked (laughs) how cool is that i know (laughs) 
it's like going to the uh the like the muppets in like 4d it, yeah in like exactly um, yeah universal or disney or wherever the heck that is so, right right so and what now do you think I, of, you know, what did i i was gonna say what did you think of what we're gonna say oh no i, I was gonna say that um I know there's a, a black and white and a color option. And I watched the color option and I kind of wish I had watched the black and white. When I go I back and revisit, that. yeah, when I it's it's color or black and white. They have both options. Um when I go back and revisit, I am gonna watch the black and white. I love black and white film. Oh, me too. And yeah, I, I think I, I just think that these films are meant to be viewed in black and white it's how they were done and, and oh, it yeah. just it just brings that whole vibe and that whole you know uh it's it just sets up the tone for the movie and i yeah. i feel like something's lost in the color part yeah for sure and like you know with this film in particular uh the tingler so we haven't even really mentioned what the tingler is it's a really funny name uh, <laughs> it um, sounds like tickler yeah right and I, every, like when i every time i brought up <laughs> every time i brought up this movie or this set and then like one of my friends saw the, like the tingler on the side he's like what what kind of movie is this yeah you're like, wondering what, right what's this um, <laughs> and i'm like well it's a creature that lives on your spine mm-hmm. that uh, only comes out when you have some kind of spine tingling fear that that like, kind of strikes you and it's really quick right like when we have those kind of moments and right. so this creature can potentially cause death and so vincent price wanted to figure out like is there something that causes this in a very mad scientist kind of way and he discovered through like an x-ray of something of some sort that this thing exists there's a creature called the tingler Mm -hmm. it comes out and kind of going back to uh your black and white uh, discussion Mm -hmm. like with this in particular, you could see some of the strings, <laughs> the fish on, hook, the fish on, wire, <laughs> on the fish wire on the yeah. <laughs> on the tingler itself when it's moving around. Yeah, kind of looks like a lobster. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like that's the thing that if you were to see this in black and white, it would like kind of take that away probably. But also, like there's that tone, that atmosphere that you'd get mm-hmm. from this film that like definitely definitely fits. Like out of all the films that we have that we're going to be talking about, this one definitely seems like the one that should be in black and white. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And so, uh, as I was watching it in color, I was like, why didn't I do black and white? But I, <laughs> I didn't want to stop. That. I was really enjoying the movie. But definitely, it's a different a whole tonal experience. It's just totally different. Yeah. So, so what do you think of uh, of the movie overall? I really enjoyed it. It, uh, it was an interesting premise. And it was an interesting take on our fears. And the whole idea of trying to basically capture fear, which mm-hmm. is basically what they were trying to do. So I thought that was very creative. And it was yeah. very creative to make it something that's that's tangible as opposed to, you know, just another emotion. They actually made it into a creature. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I think this is probably out of all of the films that we're going to be talking about, probably the most original thing that he's done. Absolutely. Um, and, um, or at least, I, I mean... I don't know if this is based on a, a product that is before it, like a novel or anything. Mm-hmm. So once again, don't quote us. Don't um, quote us. <laughs> but I thought this was really, really well done. Um, yep. It's a really fun B movie. And yep. like, and it's definitely uh, worth your time. And if you want to just have like a good time and like kind of, you know, be on the edge of your seat and like make sure that you might not want to have this tingle in, in your spine. I don't know what modern audiences will feel like, you know, watching this movie, but yeah it's a really fun time and uh it's it's definitely the best way to start this entire box set oh i agree yeah i agree it's definitely it's a good jumping off point for people who maybe are newer to this maybe type of you know classic horror or even william castle right and i I, i'm just excited because like i said um yeah you know indicator uh, as a uh as a company uh, puts out really quality content um this box set's wonderful um, it, it, we're talking to people in the U.S. right now. Um, mm-hmm. This is going to have to be imported. It's a Region B. Um, I don't think we mentioned that. I guess it's get a book. This one is actually. This one's uh, all regions. This is this one's all regions, one's and you get a nice regions. book. Yeah. Each one. Each one has a nice uh, film essay book. Yeah, like which, what Criterion does. Yeah, I mean, we always love those. Mm-hmm. 
and loads of special features by a lot of film experts um, around the time periods of people who grew up watching these movies. And that's mm -hmm. the special features that I enjoyed is like people like, I remember this, I went to the theater and like experienced this. And like, now I'm like, I critique films. And so like, let's talk about William Castle. So it's and weird. I love his introduction to the audience where he oh, sits yeah. and talks to the audience. And like I said, another, another thing, it's very Hitchcockian, you know? Yeah. It's a very Hitchcock thing to do. Yeah. And, so, he, and he introduces everything like that. Yeah. And I, I just, from beginning to end, I enjoyed, I enjoyed all of them, but I, I that was my, I just watched them in order. So that was my first one. And I, I thought it was great and it's not yeah. terribly scary. So I think what's nice about it is it's another one of those films that ho horror fans will enjoy it, but you can also share it with maybe a non horror fan who doesn't oh, want, you know, they just want kind of that suspense and tension and without all the, you know, gore and all that stuff. It, it's just a good time. Yeah, for, for pretty much anyone. Yeah, for sure. This is definitely a, a movie that is is overall fun. And yeah, I would say like you could watch this, especially with other people. Like that's right. the fun thing. I think I watched all these by myself. I will say, and so I I would probably have loved to have watched this with some of my friends um, who actually I have around Chris and Daniel who've been on my. Uh, channel before who are a little bit closer to me proximity wise mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see myself watching this with um, any my roommates anybody around me oh and yeah I think anyone would enjoy this absolutely so good good first choice right and Vincent Price too we didn't even mention how awesome he is right he's in this. yeah he steals the show I mean what movie can you think of that Vincent Price is in where he doesn't steal the show I know and I will it's say Oh. I'm unfortunately uh, very new to Vincent Price, so I'm still getting there. Well, I can't wait to talk Vincent Price with you more in the future because you are in for a very big treat. Well, I love his voice and I, I love that uh, I love man's face. So I, I can't wait to jump more into his, his films. Hey. So exciting. So do you have anything else to say about The Tingler? Um, I don't want to say too much because I want, uh, you know, I, I want people to enjoy it for themselves. And I think it's easy to spoil. Sure. And you never want to spoil that first time watch for people. And right. uh, I just say, whether you're a horror fan or not, give it a go because it's a lot of fun. And I would agree with you, go with the black and white. Go with the black and white. And I watched it in color just like you. So I mm -hmm. will have to both watch it in black and white now. So absolutely. But definitely check that one out. for that Absolutely. One. All right. Speaking of black and white... Mm -hmm. and uh, different colors uh, that are involved. We're next talking about 13 Ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Mine's backwards and yours is forward. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I can, it looks oh, nice. that's, it looks good on my end. <laughs> that's yeah, you're fine. Um, uh, tell us about 13 Ghosts. Oh, 13 Ghosts. Well, the, w the one thing uh, that we did mention uh, right before we started is, did, did I say before we started that Scream Factory just did the... Uh, yeah, they just did a, a release of the remake for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought this was another one. This was great. And black and white, of course, I watched it in black and white. And I found this one uh, to be a lot more atmospheric, mm -hmm. super creepy. Campy, too. Campy, definitely, you know, that B-movie fun. Mm-hmm. But I thought that the uh, the effects that they used, I thought they were really well done. I mean, you're talking at a time when everything's practical effects. Right. And I was really impressed with what they were able to do. And that's Percepto. Or Illusiono, sorry. Illusiono. Illusiono. He always Illusiono. puts O at the end. Yeah. yeah. So Illusiono. So Illusiono. the gimmick here with um, William Castle's films, like if you went to watch this movie in the theaters, is mm -hmm. you'd get this type of 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you were saying with the special effects like when the ghosts pop up on the screen mm -hmm. there's a specific color that kind of resonates with those ghosts mm -hmm. and uh that is like it's almost like ethereal it's you can almost see it mm -hmm. past you know like there's like a scene going on like there's characters and then there's like a ghost that's interacting with them mm -hmm. uh, that like obviously was filmed elsewhere and like you know layered on top of it mm -hmm. and so that illusion though has two different colors one uh, to see the ghosts. So like, if you want to see the ghosts more vividly, if you watch, like, I wish this would come with the glasses. That's the one yeah. thing. I, like, that's the one thing I was looking for, actually. I was like, where's the glasses in this? Uh, exactly. Um, 
And then the other side of the glasses, if you're too scared, you can look at the other glasses and the ghosts will disappear. Which, which we might be too scared. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I got scared a couple times. That lion really scared me. Yeah, the lion. That was that kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, okay, that's cool. But you know, it's gonna have. It's actually, it's uh, here. Mm-hmm. There yeah, he is. The, the headless. The, uh, yeah, the headless trainer. Headless, the headless uh, master. Uh, what, what do we call those circus masters? I can't think of what is taskmaster. Yeah. yeah, taskmaster. Yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, there's so, some really cool effects with this one. Yeah, definitely some cool effects. And uh, I just thought it was interesting. Uh, I thought this was a very, very creative storytelling because it's not what you think it's going to be. Right. You know, and I, I don't want to say too turns. much. Yeah. I don't want to say That's too it. much more because, uh, I mean, uh, you know, unless you want me to give a little tiny synopsis with hints. You can, you can give a know. little bit of a synopsis, but yeah. Like, not, yeah. You know, basically we have this family and uh, they're struggling financially and the little boy makes a birthday wish that they could move into a home where their furniture wouldn't be constantly being taken away. And the next day they find out that they've inherited a house from a long lost dead relative. And there are entities. Maybe maybe entities. Maybe, there's, them, maybe. maybe there's 13 entities <laughs> in the house and... Uh, we follow them on their journey to coexist with these entities. Mm -hmm. Mostly and the boy. I, yeah, mostly the boy. Yeah. And he was so cool. He was like a ghost hunter. Yeah, he's like, I'm friends with all of them. Yeah, he knew everybody's story. And, and you know what I really loved is uh, the, if people decide to watch this, the interesting thing was the uh, the housekeeper. I guess they called her the, uh, the housekeeper or the mm -hmm. assistant Oh, I know who you're talking about. She was the Wicked Witch from yeah. The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And I picked up on it right away. And I'm like, okay, she doesn't have the nose or the hat, but I know it's her. And she's like, not yeah, green. You could, you could tell by her voice and like, mm -hmm. like her, like her, her just face. Her features. Like, right. Well, did you know, like in the special features, they actually mention, like, uh, so there was a lot of references to Wizard of Oz. In, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in fact, there's two in particular, like the kid, like when he first meets the like the witch like this isn't mm -hmm. like well i also i already said it like yeah. this isn't any spoilers or anything this is no, just like, no, no, no. A, like a little like nod to the wizard mm -hmm. of oz and to right. his character like at the very beginning um he, like when he the kid sees her is like are you a witch and then she's mm -hmm. like i don't know am i like she had like a broom in her hand and stuff yeah like, i, I yep. loved it so yeah i like that too those subtle nods Mm -hmm. I, th I thought it was great and as soon as she came on screen I was so excited because I, I really enjoy her I thought she was fantastic in the Wizard of Oz she was fantastic mm -hmm. in this and uh she really did set anytime she came on this uh, in the scene she set the tone right and yeah no I yeah she's she's a perfect like one of like one of those characters like you would see in like the old dark house like the or, right like the original one right to like you would see some character that like definitely brings a specific um tone to like the scene and like like right. where where it's going to potentially lead mm -hmm. right and it's very unsettling and i love it yeah yeah the, this whole f i found this one much more unsettling than the tingler like right this one but again it's still a movie that horror fans and non-horror fans can enjoy because it's more of that suspenseful anxiety inducing you know, those anxiety inducing situations, but oh, so much fun and so well done and such a great engaging story that just, it, it, it pulls you along. Yeah. And I, I will say there was, uh, there was some moments that like made me giggle up and crack up a little bit. Oh they yeah. Made, they're, 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 they may have like overutilized some of the effects, at least the sound effects. Yeah. yeah. The sound yeah. effects are the ones that got me. I was like, okay, cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, I, I don't think, I didn't see as many strings in this one. I think I saw one on a candle. Yeah, I saw one on a candle too. <laughs> on the like candle. It's moving. Yeah, it's moving. But yeah. I, I think, but then again, I watched this one in black and white. So like you said, it kind of maybe camouflages those things those that things they had to rig bit. up. But right. yeah, I thought, it, what, what did you think of the special effects? I thought the the effects were great. Um, there was definitely a couple of the ghosts that were like looked pretty like terrifying. Oh yeah. Um, a few of them, like like the couple that danced, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, those people uh, they look a little uh, 
and then there was like you know a skeleton like kind of like one of those black suits that you mm-hmm. wear and then like skeletons like that one's a little bit more gimmicky so you would yeah a little hokey you're like like you're like i can see that's a person clearly but then there's a few of them that are like there's some disfigured faces and whatnot and so it's it's a little bit more disturbing and so yeah i thought the effects were and great this dude oh yeah that's him the, the corporeal form of yeah uh, the, the 13th ghost right yeah oh but that is such a great image for the front oh, of the yeah. box set. Oh, it's perfect. That's that's probably yeah. Like this is this is what sells the box set. Like look at uh, that. Absolutely. And yeah. I, I thought that that was so perfect. And like I said, I, I did definitely find this one to be more leaning towards the horror element than the Tingler. But definitely right. a home run all around. I I loved it. Yeah. So this is a this is a good introduction to some William Castle. So yeah. I, you know, and I yeah. think. Some of these, I think they, I'm not sure, but I think some of them are still available individually, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, probably on their site, on, on Indicator. Probably site. on, uh, probably on the Indicator site. What is it? Powerhouse? Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Films. Yeah, Powerhouse yeah. Films, but. Um, UK.co. Yep. I and like I know that. if you, we'll put it down there's, the there's like special edition means you get the book with it. Mm-hmm. And then there's another one, uh just the standard edition does not include the book just so right, people just know so if you want yeah. the book you want to get the 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 i think it's the le limited edition yeah limited edition yeah mm-hmm. yeah and they and they have like a limited r- runs of this i don't know what uh your number of uh, your spine is but like uh, uh six thousand mm-hmm. copies of the of the box set themselves yes um, i have three thousand one hundred and ninety three i'm two thousand eight hundred eleven so we're close. We got it around the same time. Yeah, so. we, we did. Because I think that maybe you may have encouraged me a little bit. May, maybe. I, I don't know. Right? I don't know. I, <laughs> Not responsible. Don't quote me. Don't. Uh, well, yeah, we, don't we definitely us. hurt each other's wallets. That's <laughs> yes. for sure. Without a doubt. And, yes. I, and I love it, though. I wouldn't have yeah. it any other way. Same right here. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I think this is a nice introduction to William Castle. And hopefully you guys will have some questions for us or yeah. share your experiences. Let us know what William Castle films you enjoy. Yeah, just tell us down in the comment section down below. We're both going to be checking it out. I'm going to be mm-hmm. putting this on my channel. Uh, and then uh, part two will come out um, later on. It'll be a little bit past Halloween, but, you know, we're really busy people. So, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, we'll definitely have part two when we're talking about homicidal and Mr. Sardonicus. Mm-hmm. And um, like, we're excited about this. And um, yeah. Anything else to say, Steph? No, I'm just, I'm excited. I, I want to share this with everybody. I want everybody to go out and enjoy this like we are. And uh, I, I think it's a, it, it, like I said, it's great for horror films, non-horror film, uh, non-horror fans, either one. I think every, it's something for everyone. There's something for everyone in it. Right. This is definitely just one of those fun things that like, you, yeah, it's, like obviously we, we both love, um, you know, like horror films or like maybe art house contemporary films, but like, this is a, like, this is a set that, yeah, it comes from um, a, a company that might be a little bit more boutique. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like there, it's campy, it's fun, it's it's something that's really inviting to a, a lot of people, and, and almost anybody can watch this. And yeah, and it the time. definitely doesn't take itself too seriously, which is no. something that I can really appreciate because there isn't that pretentious quality to it. You know, it's right. just it's meant to be enjoyed. Yep, I couldn't and, have said it better myself. Yeah, so I, I say if you're on the fence, dive in, join us. Join, join us, join everyone. us, join we'll us. Watch. Join click us. Click on the link down below. <laughs> Join us. Yeah, Join we're, we're us. part of the ghosts. <laughs> Come well, thanks, us. Steph. Um, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Nathan, so much. Always a pleasure. Yeah. So uh, everyone who's watching this, um, yeah, tell us down in the comment section. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be happy to read that. And I hope you like this video and you share your thoughts with it. And uh, make sure that you check out part two coming up very soon. Um, and we'll be linking that uh, once that happens. But part one's up, and so I I hope everyone enjoys this part. So thank you uh, once again for watching. I hope everyone has a good night or um, a good morning whenever you're watching this. So (laughs) thank you.